what's something that people aren't putting into their brand bibles that we should? People don't put in the brand DNA, the brand essence. They're like, what is the brand in one word? What are like the first three questions that a, a, a business owner should ask before even starting to put their messaging out and going all in on social media? I know that's a long question, but what are some questions we should ask a business owner? What do we stand for as a brand? What's the why? What are the shared values that we have with our audience? What kind of content is not necessarily out there for that tribe that links directly back to our products that they would actually enjoy and benefit from? Today we're joined by brand consultant, number one Amazon bestseller, been in the design and branding space for over 20 years, and his brand consulting agency in Los Angeles is killing it, has been killing it, will continue to kill it. Fabian Gayhalter, welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. And like I said, I'm under a little bit of the weather here, so I appreciate you being here to pick up my slack because I'm bringing in a little bit of cold energy, so you got to bring the hot so we can even each other out. Cool. So listen, I, I got to say that I had a chance to watch Fabian, listen to Fabian on The Future with Christo, and I just heard like so many different pieces of knowledge and information that really helped me. I want to get into it, but I want to start, Fabian, by just talking about branding as a whole. Branding has become this really popular tag word, if you would. Just tell me, after 20 years in the industry, what does the word branding mean to you? <laughs> I get I get I get asked that every every time, right? And it's a huge question. It's a big one. Um I try to answer it differently every time just because, you know, it's 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 such a fluid uh, subject. I mean, look, branding in the end, you know, you you've got a company, and I'm not talking personal brand, right? You you've got a company, um, and and it needs a face and it needs a soul. It needs to come through to a customer, right? So there's basically this entire atmosphere around the company that a customer or a client when it's B2B needs to poke through in order to get to what you're offering, right? And whatever that atmosphere is that they need to poke through, that's, that's your brand, right? So it's like, it's your personal brand. It's what you put out there. It's your digital brand. It's, you know, I mean, it's a freaking trade show booth, right? I mean, it's whatever. It's what other people say about the brand too, right? It's like this, this atmosphere around your offering that creates your brand. And you can, to a certain extent, create that atmosphere. You can dictate it. You can think about what do I want that atmosphere to be? How do I create between my offering and, and, and the person, right? How do I create a link? How do I create shared values? How, where, where do we all meet, right? And so that really is branding. I mean, it's, it's a holistic big thing, but in the end, yeah, it's a logo. Yeah, it's a name, but, but it's everything. I mean, it's copy. It's, 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 it's digital. It's offline. It's everything. Does that clear anything up, Mark? <laughs> well, it, 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 it does. It does. And I think you made a good point. It's not just a logo. It's that feeling. It's the soul. It's the face of your brand. I like to think of branding as if someone hears my name or the name of my company, what's, what do they think next? What's the feeling that they have? What are the words? Like, I want when somebody hears Mark Savant, they think better content, less time. That's it, right? That's the brand, better content, less time. But I, I think the reason that's important, Fabian, is that people all the time ask me, Mark, how can I get more reach? How can I get more views? How can I get more likes? It, to me, it all comes down to the branding, to the messaging. And, and to your point, it comes down to positioning. And I've heard you talk about this. I want to hear from you, Fabian. Why is brand positioning so important for every person, every business owner? You know, brand positioning is, you know, in the end, it is, it is a business plan that 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 is, is, is made for your brand, right? So you basically have to define, okay, this is the audience. These are exactly the people I want to reach. Um, mm -hmm. This is the category that I fit into. Here are all of these emotional or functional benefits that I provide them with. And then you have to answer Simon Sinek's why. Like, like why? Like, like, okay, you do these things, but why do you do them? Why would people deeply care about you doing that? versus any one of your competitors, right? And if you're like, no, I don't have competitors. I'm a startup that's doing something uniquely new. Well, if you if you have something that's worthwhile, it will be copied and you will have competitors in no time. So from the get-go, you need to stand for something. You need to have that. And so if you if you create that early on, and and you know, I mean, look, Mark, it could just be a sentence, right? I mean, it could just be that one sentence. People say, I'm so busy, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm, I'm doing product development, I'm doing all of this stuff. I'm like, 
yeah, do you never have time to sit down for an hour or two and think about your brand? What about mm. what about that airplane ride, right? What about, you know, the time you sat on a rock after your hike? It's like just think about what is that what is that why? What what is bigger? What is bigger than than your offering, right? So, positioning in itself is very philosophical, but it's one sentence. Literally, it can be one sentence and everyone has time for that. Well, it, if you don't have time for it, your business just is, it's not going to work. None of your messaging or your, your branding in general is, is going to work. And so this is something I think that you do that's really interesting, Fabian. Uh, you, your, your brand consulting firm, Finian, you don't do any of the design work. You don't do any of the editing, anything like that. You're a brand consultancy, right? So one of the things that I've found when it, when, correct me if I'm wrong before I roll into my next question. You go in, you meet with large organizations or small to, small to large organizations, and you help them rebrand or get their branding clear right? They're positioning, their messaging. Yeah, absolutely. We do touch some of some some of the other stuff, right? We, we do create names, we create brand identities, but we don't roll them out, right? We're not hungry to do all the work, right? So mm -hmm. it's really very, very top level. And like you like you mentioned, one of the key things that that, that I do is is sit down with 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 the C-suite of these companies and really define their brand early on. And, and quite frankly, that's the most important job in my eyes. Well, and what, so one of the problems that I found when you're sitting down with someone is they already know what all their problems are. You know, they already know everything. They know all the problems. They just don't know how to solve them, right? Do you find that I've made this mistake before when I'm meeting with a new client and we're working on projects together, I just try to, to do whatever they ask. They say, oh, Mark, I need a podcast. Okay, let's do that. Oh, Mark, I need this. But do you find that oftentimes the problem that this brand thinks they have, it's, it's not actually the real problem? It, I mean, is that something that you find? Yeah, I mean, you're giving me that nugget because exactly that's what that's what happens all the time, right? I so mean, how do I you was, dig was, in? Well, I mean, look, I was on a call with with a potential client today, and they said, "Look, we're talking to a couple of people about this. You know, what's your take?" And I'm like, "Well, what did the other people tell you?" And then they said, "Well, the one company said we need to do this, this, and this, and it's like this much, and the other one said we need to do something totally different, and it's it, it's much, much more, and we're confused." And I'm like. Well, that makes a lot of sense because you haven't defined the problem yet. You haven't defined, okay, let's look under the hood. We need to look under the hood before we can really say that, right? If you drive in with your car and you say, hey, you know, I've got, I've got problems sometimes in the morning. It, it doesn't start up well or, you know, and you're like, okay, cool, perfect. Well, that's $2,000. Just leave it here overnight. That's not how it works. Somehow with companies and marketing and branding, that's how it seems to work, but it doesn't, right? You first need to say, okay, you know, what, what, what is the company about? What does it stand for? What are the values? You know, how is our culture, right? How, how, are, how are our products selling and are they connecting with the customers? What are we doing to engage people? You need to literally just figure out where's the brand at and then you can prescribe. You know? <laughs> then you say, oh, right. it actually hurts with culture. You didn't even think about that before. It, it, it's not even a branding issue. It's a culture problem. You, you, we need to fix the culture before we go into the brand. So there's always, there's always this, this, you know, like look under the hood, right? And a lot of consultants or agencies, they come in and then they say, okay, cool. So, so we're going to look under the hood, uh, meet you guys in two weeks. We're going to do all the research. We're going to, you know, send us everything you have. But that's not how it works. You got to sit down with the CEO. You got to sit down with the founder. You got to sit down with the COO, yeah. with the CTO, with the CFO, right? You got to really have these people together and then basically have a massive therapy session for their brand. <laughs> I'm like, what's really going on? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 like, listen, this, this all makes sense. I like the idea of a therapy session because a lot of times that's probably what it turns into once you've got all these different people, in different positions, different egos, different goals. But like... The challenge I have here, and I just want to get a little bit, you know, because what you do is actually reminds me a lot of what I do over here at Mark Savant Media. You have this program called Resonate, right? It's an eight-hour deep dive where you go 360-degree brand, again, deep dive with these companies. But I think you said something that's interesting here. Normally, when, when I'm working with a client, like, it's hard to know exactly how to maximize their brand in an eight-hour session. Because like you said, you've got to do research and you got to do keywords and whatnot. How... How do you actually deliver a tangible value to that client at, before you've actually had a chance to go back to your uh, to your tool shed to pull out the right tools to solve the problems? 
Yeah, so my tool shed are those eight hours. <laughs> so my, my tool, no, and, and I'm quite, I quite, I quite say, I mean, I've done uh, the last, the last workshop that I've done was yesterday um, with a company that was uh, in India, in the US, uh, in in Great Britain, and they were all over, right? It was like twelve people, um, and there were a lot of issues with the company. Um, and 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 the thing is, you know, just getting these people together to go through a very linear process where. Mm one answer that we build together, right? To a simple question of like, why does this brand exist? It's like, <laughs> like that, that's right. a big question. Why does this brand exist, right? Like, let's not talk about product. Why does it exist? Um, I mean, that's a question that that takes, you know, a good 30 minutes, 40 minutes for everyone to kind of brainstorm, like, what is that? And then there's the next question, right? Um, and then, and, you know, it's like, what does everyone in the company, you know, what, what, what connects everyone within the company? It's like culture. It's like, whoa, what's that? And so I created this process where one question leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next, and everything becomes more concise. And it, it all leads to one North Star, right? All leads to, holy smokes, like our our brand actually stands for X, right? It all stands right. for empowerment. It all stands for... And at the end of these sessions, after eight hours, when everyone is completely pooped, right? And they're like, oh my God, my head is spinning, which is literally what the CEO yesterday said, right? Is... Everyone is clarity and everyone as in, if the entire C-suite goes through this together, there doesn't need to be a sign off and there doesn't need to be a, let's have 10 more meetings about this. No, everyone agrees on this at the end of eight hours. And to me, a lot of the toolkits are not needed anymore. After that, it's basically like, look, here's your messaging platform. Here's your brand platform. You know who you are. You know what you stand for. You know what connects you with your customers. Now let's have the sales team talk like that. Let's change the copy on the website. Let's change our social media. Let's have everything go to that North Star. So a lot of the tactical stuff that happens afterwards, but it happens pretty intrinsically where everyone who comes yeah. out of this can lead their teams. Yeah, and, and that makes sense because, like you said, you you end up getting more clarity over who you're speaking to, what's the problem, why me, why do we even exist. It makes a lot of sense. And for me, I think it's really important that we have some sort of centralized document, like a brand bible. Is that something you work on with your clients? You know, constructing a brand bible. A and B. What should we be putting in our brand bible? Like we know mission statement, vision statement, key competencies, SWOT analysis. What's something that people aren't putting into their brand bibles that we should? <laughs> Great question. Um, so, so twofold, right? Um, on 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 the one hand, you know, when it comes to when it comes to, do I actually create a brand bible? Not really. I I, I call it. Uh, there there are two things, right? So, the outcome of this workshop is your brand platform, and that's one mm -hmm. document. And the brand platform is really going deep into you know in in into brand strategy, right? The positioning statement, the mission, the core values, you know, our brand personality, you know, why this brand exists, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's that kind of stuff. And that's the brand platform, which should make its way into a brand Bible. But yeah. my problem with a brand Bible is that um, you don't you don't read it daily. It's not a thing. It's not a thing that you, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's as long, and, and by Bible, not in a religious way, but anything that's thick, right? Like a thick book. Yeah. You usually don't consult it on a daily basis, right? Um, what happens with brand Bibles, they, they are kind of like brand style guides and, they, and, and they're somewhere on the desktop. No one knows where it is. No one really cares about it. Um, it needs to be intrinsic. People need to live it, right? The thing is, if you've got this, if you've got this, and this is, goes to your other, other um, question, what do people not put in? People don't put in the brand DNA, the brand essence. They're like, what is the brand in one word, right? Like, what can we all... like? If I would ask you, what is your brand in one word? It's a big question, right? I mean, it takes yeah. thinking, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of thought behind that. But if everyone, you know, you start with, this is our brand in one word, and then you go down positioning, then you go further down, then you go into the identity and you're like, not don't stretch the logo. We all know don't stretch the logo. You know, like that doesn't matter. That's, <laughs> that's like 20 pages in the brand Bible. No, just tell me why the logo exists. What is the idea behind it? How does that logo resonate with us internally and externally? Right. So more, more deep conversations about the brand rather than all this fluff um, over 50 pages. So my brand Bible is called the brand sheet and it's one page 
It's a long page. I mean, it's as tall as I am, right? Like it's, a, <laughs> it's a long page, but it's one page that people scroll through like a website from the top to the bottom, and they get they they do learn what fonts to use and what colors to use and how our brand looks like. But it's at the very end when it's like, look, because of all of this, this is how we look like. So no one can question. Why that font? Why that color? No, we have to educate them as if they were part of the brand building process. Mm. Everything you've just said makes a lot of sense to me, Fabian, because if too much information just ends up burning too many calories, it's too confusing. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, but I, I do think that this process that you're talking about going through and asking these difficult questions, getting clear is vital. And the reason I like having some sort of one sheet for me is it helps deliver a, a clear message to any maybe new team members you're bringing on, anyone you're collaborating with, brand sponsors, things of that nature. But I, if I'm hearing you right, it's going through all these processes, doing all these exercises so that at the end you have a very clear why statement, right, that resonates throughout your organization, right? Can you maybe give me an example of, uh, of something that really stands out to you? Well, I mean, look, I mean, so, so yeah, I call it the brand DNA. As branders, we always have to come up with terms. And, I, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a disease, right? It's, it's like the North Star, the brand essence. And you got to copyright it. DNA. Nobody take my brand I know, DNA. <laughs> it's the whole thing, right? But, um, but for one of the books I wrote, I, I asked, you know, like, and what else is in the brand? And that end flipped around is the DNA of the brand, right? Because if you ask what else is in there, right, it's the DNA. Oh. And I like that, that metaphor, like, and what? And why? And, you know, and then it's like, well, this is why. Right. Mm. So, I mean, if you, if you think about brands like like Evelyn, you know, Evelyn is all about radical transparency. That's it. Right. Like that's on top of the company. Right. If you think about Coca-Cola, it's all about happiness. If you think about, um, you know, if you think about uh, Sappo's shoes, it's all about wow. It's all about customer service. Right. So but. None of it is about shoes or sugary soft drinks or, you know, clothes right. made in Vietnam, right? It's, it's all about it's deeper. And once you have that word and you said something interesting before, you said, well, if I onboard new team members, they know what the brand is about. But it's even for yourself and it's even for mm. myself, right? For our own brands, when we post everything we post on social, <laughs> you know, it needs to go back to, wait, is that us? Is that our brand? And it's not just the colors and everything, but it's what we say, what we repost, what we comment on. Is that part of our brand? And so having that sheet in front of us and say, hey, we're Evelyn. We're all about radical transparency. Is that like, does that, are we showcasing this through everything that we do, right? Um, are we truly radical transparent? How can we be more radical transparent, right? Or, or you know, if you're a joyous brand and it's all about bringing joy and delight into 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 your customers, right? I just yesterday, uh, well, a couple of days ago, I interviewed uh, the founder of JetBlue. And I mean, you remember when JetBlue came out and suddenly it's like, it was literally surprise and delight in, in, in an inexpensive airline and you're like whoa you know i get tv i get live tv you know even though i'm sitting on a on an inexpensive plane an inexpensive seat um but it's these little it's these little you know pieces of delight if you are known for that you can't make ticketing difficult you can't make anything difficult if it's about joy right like how mm. do you create that mm. joy so i think having these words that might seem meaningless to an outside party when they say hey we're all about joy but then you go through the Instagram account, you know, you go through the experience of the brand, it needs to always be joyful. And so I think it really sets, it's not the brand pillars. No, it's one freaking ginormous pillar. It's like everything right. has to come back to that one thing. So to expand on that, go just a, a slight bit deeper. We, we've, we've got this kind of clarity. We've developed our pillar. When I think of this in the context of social media, because that's, that's really what I'm focused on right now is how can I reach more people via social media? How can I create better content in less time, right? Listen, all the After Hours Entrepreneurs, we got great businesses, we're trying to grow it, but we realize that this is the way that communication is done. It's communicated via social media. Even if you're clear on your brand, don't you think that your messaging on different platforms needs to be a little bit different? Or is that a, oh. a slippery slope? It's both, right? I mean, on the one hand, you know, on the one hand, your your philosophy and your main reason for being should not change from channel to channel, right? So yeah. if you're a brand that is about spreading joy and that is about about that, right? 
it doesn't matter if you're on LinkedIn, <laughs> you know, and it's B2B, you, you're still spreading joy. Like your messages mm. should still be around that, right? And they can talk about how your company spreads joy on LinkedIn, but it's still the, the actual content is about joy. So I think it's, it's, it's dangerous in a way to have very differentiated strategies for, for social media. But on the other hand, the audience is always also demand it, right? And different media, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, video, imagery, voice, you know, text, they all shine in different platforms, right? And then the, someone who's, who's following you on TikTok is someone very different that is on, that is on LinkedIn. And we, yeah. we, we need to be aware of that, right? And so we can change our professional tone as a person or as a brand slightly from channel to channel. But what's at the heart of the brand, what's at the, the heart and soul of, of who you are as a, as, a, as a brand, as a company, cannot change from one outlet to another. Yeah. Well, it, I, so if I'm hearing you correctly, changing your messaging slightly to adapt based on the platform, okay, but your core, as you said, brand, the emotion, the spirit, the soul of your company needs to be synonymous across platforms, right? And, and that's it, exactly it. And, and as I think about this, I think this is becoming more and more and more important as, I mean, I'm under the, I have a thesis, Fabian, that in, in five years, every single business is going to have to have their own media company built in, you know, because that's the way that we do. You know, people, people aren't watching TV ads. People don't care about your bench ad. I don't care about your billboard. What I do care about is, is getting reached right here by your brand and having that same message. So if I'm a, if I'm a business owner and I'm like, Fabian's right, Mark's on to something. I need to be more active on social media. What are like the first three questions that a, a, a business owner should ask before even starting to put their messaging out and going all in on social media? I know that's a long question, but what are some questions we should ask <laughs> business owners? No, you know, and, and I'm going to be a one trick pony and I'm going to repeat myself a little bit with this. Um, you know, something that you said before, I, I really enjoyed about the soul, right? You said, what's the soul of, mm. of a brand? And, you know, it's what I think every every business, um, every entrepreneur should really be very aware of is that when you create a brand, you create something that has a soul, that has heart and soul, because otherwise it doesn't connect with people, right? And you need to create something that connects with people. So the minute that you create this, whatever your voice is, whatever you put out there, it needs to connect to the other person, obviously, because why else would you put it out, right? You want comments, right. you want likes, you want that interaction. But if you define that soul of your brand, and it might not happen, you know, in the in the first day or in the first week or the first month or the first year, it happens over time. But once you define what makes it stick, right, and who your tribe is, and how you exchange value between each other, right, um, because that's when a brand really becomes exciting. When when a brand is kind of like a person, right? When you follow brands on on on, on your phone, you know, the ones that push messages about you know products, you you're really not that excited. The right. ones that push messages that you relate to, and then every now and then they talk about the product, you cling on to them, right? Um, and going back to the idea of soul, you can't steal soul, right? From a, from a brand, right? They can steal everything, but they can't steal that soul that you have, right? Mm -hmm. So even if everyone, and I, that's why I say branding is a little bit of a, of a competitive um, advantage. Um, it's an insurance layer around you, right? Because if they rip off your product and whatever happens, right? If you've got a tribe that loves you, you've got the advantage, right? Because they love you for what you stand for, not just for a product. So even if you screw up a product or if there's a problem or if a competitor does your same product cheaper, right? Which they will do. They will still come to you because they, they, they trust you and they like you. And it's really just like your best friends, right? That's what a brand, that's what a brand needs to become. So back to your social media question, that, that needs to be the foundation, right? So what, how do you, how do you create that? So really think about what do we stand for as a brand? What's the why? What are the shared values that we have with our audience mm. where we can meet them at the same point, right? Um, and, then, and then last but not least, you know, how do I, what kind of content is not necessarily out there for that tribe that links directly back to our products that they would actually enjoy and benefit from? Mm. I mean, I think that's that's. I think that last point is is very profound about what type of content is not out there serving 
the audience and the potential client that, that I can serve now can I do that differently? It reminds me of, gosh, I can't remember his name here. There was a plumber. That's going to drive me nuts. I can't remember his name, but there's a plumber who got on YouTube and started making a bunch of plumbing videos. And now he's got millions and millions and millions of views on, on YouTube because he was serving that, that audience, that underserved audience, people that want to do plumbing in their house. I mean, it's, it's which, it, which everyone needs, right? I mean, that's the thing, right? It's like, right. it's again, it's like, be helpful and people will listen to you, right? Yeah. And then once they listen to you, they gain trust, they start liking you, and then you never, ever have to sell. You just share with them new stuff you came up with and they're excited because that's what they want, right? So I think that whole idea of selling, especially on social media, we should never call it selling. We, we, should, we should just, right. you know, we always create value, just some of the value is bigger and hence, it, hence, it, hence there's a price tag associated with it. Yeah, 100% you shouldn't be selling. And I think that if your branding is on, is on point, uh, and of course, if you're working with Fabian Gerhardt and uh, Finian, your branding is going to be on point. But as long as your branding's on point and your messaging rings through, I think you'll be able to deliver that, um, you know, develop that relationship. I, I, wanna, I just want to kind of expand on one thing you'd mentioned. You said shared values, right? And that's a big part of the brand experience. If I have a shared value with my, my customer, it's going to be a much stronger brand. Do you think that at a certain point, you can have just too many shared values and people are like, like, for example, I love, uh, you know, I'm, I'm big about social media. I love pizza. Chocolate's great. I want to, you know, uh, like Tom's, I want to provide shoes to people overseas. Like, do you think there's a certain point where maybe you have, you're trying to create too many values at once? Do you think it's better just, just to really focus in on one or two core values? Am I overthinking this Fabian? Help me out here. I don't think you're overthinking it, but 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 I think you're already pointing to 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 the logical answer of it, right? It's it, uh, you can overdo everything, and I think no. brands that are successful are very concise. Brands that are successful don't have a wall of values where it's like seven keywords, and under each keyword are five bullet points, because no one's gonna remember it, and no one's gonna care, and so there goes your value exercise, right? So mm. I think that values. I mean, you can have three values max and they need to be actionable and they need to be values that you feel like they're really intrinsic. Everyone in the company feels like, yeah, I can put my fist in the air. That's something I stand for. And then vice versa, you can put a mirror at your audience and they're like, ah, these are values that I share with them. And I actually really like that. And there are not too many companies out there that have that kind of offering and those kind of values. And hence, I'm going to remember them and I'm going to become part of their tribe. So really be concise. You know, stand, You should stand for one thing only as a brand, right? You should stand for one thing and you should only have a couple of values that you share, right? And I wouldn't consider pizza a value. <laughs> no, I mean... I mean, it, it, it Florida pizza, it, when you're a, when you're a 38 year old father in Florida, pizza becomes a pretty core value. Let me tell you something, especially if there's pepperoni and beer involved. Let me say, let me tell you. <laughs> Maybe that's more of a brand philosophy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Pizza Hut, then it might be, you know. Then it might, yeah, that's uh, true. Uh, that's true. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this, this has been really brilliant, Fabian. I really appreciate you taking a few minutes. Before I get into the overrated, underrated section, though. I just want to encourage everyone, you got to check out what Fabian's doing. The Instagram game is on point. I love what you do with Instagram too. It's it's not just a bunch of photos and videos, which I focus on, but you're actually bringing text. And actually, I do want to ask you about that. How? What's your thought process be behind your LinkedIn and your Instagram presence? What's the thought process between the way that you're configuring your posts? So, um, so listen, I, I think that currently something is happening um, with a lot of consultants and thought leaders and gurus and ninjas and all of that stuff, right? Everyone copies each other, right? There's nothing out there that in any way is, to me, at least like super interesting, right? I mean, there's just a lot of stuff out there, unless you really sit down and you actually think on your own. Um, and so with my posts, what I'm trying to do, instead of posting every day five times and making it a checkoff list like it's a it's a breakfast you know uh you know like menu or i'm going to the supermarket i i try to be very consistent about once a week i i think about you know like what did i learn this week or what is something that i you know that that that, that you know working with clients that i think other people can learn from and i call it my brand therapy thursday and so it's literally you can call me lazy but it's one sentence a week <laughs> you know that i put out there um and of course i do lots of other stuff too but i i find it so much more 
interesting for myself to think about something deep that I that I that I you know realized um then then a lot of that stuff where it's like copy paste copy paste I don't differentiate my um my my strategy too much between the channels um you know there's because that to me seems to be my brand and the people that follow me they like to learn about branding right and so so that's that's kind of an evergreen but I definitely push different kind of content on Instagram just based on, you know, the ease of stories and everything is a little bit more lighthearted than what I do on LinkedIn, where obviously, you know, I use it more for, for you know, recruiting or for sharing, you know, positions out there, you know, in other companies, opportunities. And it's, you know, it's just slight, slight nuances. Yeah. Yeah, well, I dig that. I'm I'm a little bit more on the, the side of the Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, 100 posts a day type of mentality. But I do agree that if you... Have a clear vision about who you are, where you want to go. You've got a clear vision about what you actually enjoy. Like you could have a 10 person team that helps with all this production, but that's not what you, that's not where you're headed as a brand right now. Um, and so I think just being clear with yourself and with your audience is, is where you need to be. Like my brand is not more content, less time. It's better content, less time. So if you focus on the better, then you're going to have a, you know, it's, it's going to really shine through. So listen, y'all, you got to check out Fabian at Finian.com. Links below. Check him out. Finian, where's the best place for people to reach you? You want us to DM you, um, blow up your Instagram, your LinkedIn? Where can people find you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram. It's, uh, it's a very peculiar handle, underscore Finian, underscore. At some point, we had that idea that that would be different. Most probably not the best strategy to copy, but that's where you can find me on Instagram. Um, you, can, uh, you can go to Finian.com. Uh, you can learn more about my uh, brand strategy course at eResonate.com. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. I think then you're in my universe. Brilliant. And there will be links below. And I, I and again, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg on this stuff. And what I'd, what I, we got a little bit into exercise to clear on these things. Um, and I just encourage everyone stop asking like how I can get more likes on Instagram and start asking, why do people care? Why do I exist? Get clear on these why questions and like how many hashtags to use. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you're, you're delivering the right message, to the right people at the right time. Um, but Fabian, before I let you go, brother, we got to get into the overrated, underrated section. All right. You ready to rock? As if I know that section. Okay, good. Bring it on. <laughs> I'm going to ask you some very difficult questions about Austria, and you're going to tell me if they're overrated, underrated. <laughs> uh, tell me. Overrated, underrated. YouTube. I don't think it's either overrated or underrated unless I need to really pick one of those two. I mean, I think I think YouTube has been uh, has been just, you know, pushing forwards like crazy. And, and, and I think I think I think there's a reason for it. Right. I think everyone overrated, uh, you know, underrated it for a long time. Then suddenly everyone started overrating it. But now it's pretty balanced. It's like everyone understands. Yeah, that's pretty important. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's pretty much, it's, and it also it's very manageable. If you have the right systems in place, it's not. It's not too crazy. Um, overrated, underrated television ads. <laughs> uh, does anyone rate them anymore? Oh, com <laughs> completely. I mean, overrated. Overrated. And especially the agencies making them. That's overrated. Because, right. boy, our advertising, uh, I mean, our advertising on TV is just, it's just a one show award winning, you know, spree for art directors. And it does not connect with today's consumers. But don't get me started on the rant. <laughs> I mean, it, it drives me nuts. How many prescription pills get pushed to me while I'm watching Baywatch with my family? Like, come on. Give me something. And you know up. what's interesting, Mark, is we're currently entering uh, we're entering the age where Instagram is turning into late night television as far mm. as like, you know, infomercials. Remember infomercials? Oh, yeah. I feel like a lot of Instagram ads are becoming infomercials. Something to think about. It's kind of weird. It's like very pushy, very quick, very like, hey, you know, if you act now, you're going to get this, right? If you call in in the next two minutes, we're going to throw yep. in this extra thing. I see a lot of that going on now. You know, if, if you know, there are only 10 of those left right now. So, yeah, that's a that's a danger of Instagram ads in case you it's, wonder it's, if that's underrated yeah, or overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I think I listen, I'm, 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 I'm on. I, I subscribe to the same, uh, I think standpoint as you do Fabian is that if I keep putting value out there people will come to me I don't need to run a bunch of like quick marketing ads to you know to fill my funnel real quick although if you can do that it's great um yeah uh, overrated underrated authorship overrated underrated authorship, authorship. um <sighs> 
Boy, look, I'm I'm an author, <laughs> so uh, I books. had great experience. I've got I've got three books uh, going. Um, it it helped it helped my career tremendously. It helped my personal brand tremendously. Um, is it overrated in a sense? Yes, because it seems like everyone needs to be an author. But if you're an author, write your own book. Right. I think it's pretty important because most people are like, I get a ghostwriter. There are plenty of services out there. I have everyone do everything and I don't have anything to do with it. And it's just going to be a blah book and no one's going to care. Right. So if mm. if authorship is is, is underrated, um, if you actually put in the time. Mm. I like that answer. Uh, last question here. Overrated, underrated logos. Huh. Brand logos. Overrated, well, underrated. You know, it all depends on which direction you come from, right? I mean, obviously, you know, I create logos for a living. I love branding. I mean, it's like, you know, I think it is extremely important. But, you know, a lot of people overrate logos because they think it's going to be their brand that it's going to save everything, which is not true. And a lot of people underrate it because they go to Fiverr and they spend $5 and five minutes yeah. on the logo and they think that that's going to move the needle. So, again, it's kind of like a neutral match between those two. Yeah, I, I like that answer as well. And um, yeah, actually, actually Feynman, I have one more question for you. If you had 10 seconds with yourself 10 years ago, what do you say? <laughs> I would say breathe deeper, do more yoga, and just just know just know it's going to be okay. You know, <laughs> you, don't have, you, don't, you don't have to work 24-7. It's just, <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> I dig that. Spoken like a true after hours entrepreneur, Fabian. Thank you so much for joining us here today, brother. My great pleasure. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for watching Mark's Vont Media here. We're going to help you create a better content in less time and turn that attention into income. If you love this video, you're going to love these videos here. Click the one. Me and my team specially selected this just for you. Click the link. Check out the video. I'll catch you here next time on Mark's Vont Media. Peace.